nobody should just talk to me anyhow you know what i mean like nobody should talk to me anyhow because i'm a different person i'm a different girl <laughs> Hey guys, so I know I have been gone for a little bit. Um, I took a mini break. Yes, I took a break that, a mini break that turned into a little bit of a long break, but that's neither here nor there. Um, right now I'm just gonna film a chit chat, get ready with me. Just to, you know, give you guys some content and everything. I currently have a wig on. I haven't had a frontal wig on in a while. This particular one I haven't had on since like February. Um, yeah, so gonna get started on my makeup. Uh, it's September, y'all, which is crazy. Like, absolutely ridiculous, I, in my opinion, like, it's my birthday month though, which is good, but it's just like, how is it September already? Like, are you dumb? <laughs> like, honestly, this quarantine has showed me that time is a social construct. You know, just being in the house for this long is just like so crazy. I don't remember the last time I was in the house for this long. I'm about to do my eyebrows and come right back to y'all actually. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So I'm back. Um, Alexa, can we get some music? Can you shuffle my music? Alexa, can we get some music? Here's Apple Music. Alexa, lower the music. As I was saying before, I stopped. Um, yeah like it's we are in september which is super crazy and i'm just i just can't believe it like honestly i can't really fathom how the months are just moving fast but yes it is my birthday month and i am celebrating i don't give i don't care <laughs> i'm celebrating in a safe way but i'm nonetheless i'm stuck um nonetheless i'm still celebrating because I feel like I've been sitting here at home. I've been sitting here at home for so long, like complying. Like the only time I did travel was to go like move out of my dorm. <laughs> and that was that. So now I'm just like, you know what? I deserve a little trip. Y'all, I feel like I did my eyebrows differently in between my eyebrows and the frontal and also the cornrows I did on my head. Like, I feel like I have a facelift. As if somebody like injected Botox. I feel like <sighs> snatched. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. So I wanted to actually talk about, this has been something that has been on my mind for a while. And today I seen a post on the shade room. I think, I don't even know who sent it. Or I think somebody either sent it to me or posted on their story um because I don't follow the shade room but I wanted to talk about what it means to be a black woman in America like, so the shade room recently posted I think today um a post about how Tory Lanez had um sent a text to Megan Thee Stallion saying I'm so sorry for shooting you I was drunk like what and I wanted to talk about this before but I was like on a break or whatever. But now that the situation has come again today, you know, has been brought back up a little bit today, I just wanted to talk about it briefly and share my thoughts um, and hopefully hear some of your thoughts as well. But you know, when Megan like had to get on camera or on Instagram live rather to really explain that she was shot and that she's not lying, I was just so heartbroken because it's like, why would you guys think that a black woman is lying about being abused by a man? Like, I feel like, I don't know, I resonated, not I resonated, but like, it it, it pained me so much to like hear all the um, discourse surrounding the incident, like on Twitter. Like, I don't follow people that were saying this, but like, obviously when, you know, you retweet stuff, people retweet stuff on your timeline. 
it was just so disheartening to see all the people saying like, oh, she's a snitch or she's lying or, you know, all this stuff. But it's like, why y'all acting like this is brand new? Like black women have been like disrespected for centuries. It just, it just really pains me. We're like black women here, like in America and around the world have just been disrespected, you know, in so many, um, aspects and it just doesn't make sense like if the very men that look like us and that came from us can't even protect us and i'm talking about black men then who is supposed to protect us i feel like as black women we are tasked with protecting everyone and that's what meg was saying like she at first was like i wasn't even gonna say it but you know y'all lying on me like and she was like i wasn't gonna talk to the police about it because you know, they be shooting us. And it's like, she was scared for her life. She was scared for her friend's life in the car. She was scared for their life. She wasn't about to say all that because it's like, everyone is attacking black people and everyone is attacking black women specifically. Like who protects us? No one. And I just, I don't get it. So I was reminded of um, Elsa Barkley Brown's um, article called Imagining Lynching. Um, and she here is talking about the Anita, Anita Hill case against uh, Clarence Thomas, who denied um, that he sexually assaulted her in the workplace. And, um, you know, he, he had used the words, you know, I'm not going to contribute. Or he said, I will not provide the rope for my own lynching. And Elsa Barkley Brown quoted, oh, she actually quoted Evelyn Hammonds. Um, by saying black women too often become suspect and discredited in our communities when we raise issues of sexism, such as sexual harassment, rape, incest, battering, date rape, or what we have experienced as women under patriarchy, a structure of domination which exists in the larger society and also within the black community. So, okay, and then it says, historically, we have been accused of being traitors to the race when we align ourselves with women's liberation struggles. So basically what this is saying is that, you know, as black women, we are called sellouts or snitches in, you know, modern day terms um, in reference to Megan Thee Stallion. But, you know, we are, we are called traitors or sellouts when we acknowledge that the black man does not protect us. You know, I feel like we fight and fight for the black man. We fight for ourselves, but fighting for ourselves also consists of fighting for everyone else because of our status on the racial and gender hierarchy. Um, but yeah, so like when we fight for other people, um, or when we fight for ourselves, we are fighting for other people, but also we fight for the black man constantly, but the black man doesn't fight for us. In fact, the black man harms us. And when we speak out about it, we're seen as wrong and we're seen as traitors and sellouts. And that's what I feel like was happening to Meg. So when Tory Lanez is talking about today, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I was drunk. Like that is just not acceptable. And I think that as black men in this society in 2020, like I feel like everything is being exposed this year. Um, whereas like, I mean, it was always a known fact, like, but it wasn't as hyper um, sensitive, I would say. It wasn't, you know, out in the open. It wasn't so rampant, rampant and in our faces on social media, but, I think 2020 was a year for everything and every system that is just freaking harmful to us to be exposed. But yeah, so it's just really interesting or really disheartening rather. It's not even interesting at this point. It's really disheartening to see so many black women like speak out and be gaslighted that has just been on my mind for a while and i felt like i was just on here like wow like oh that like black women but not it's not even like that like and then when we when we speak out about these things like i feel like people start acting like oh like you know like nobody can talk to you anymore like or men really because it's really about that you know that uh fragile masculinity like when people call people out people get upset and people get sensitive about their flaws, which I guess is understandable, but <laughs> um, 
Like I don't like I'm I don't want to speak out about these things and then become and then seem like I'm a man hater or whatever cuz I'm not. Like I really <laughs> I love me some black men, okay? I do, but it's just so frustrating being black and being woman in America. Um and granted, I personally have, you know, some privilege because, and I have to address that, I have some privilege because I haven't experienced a lot of the things that I'm seeing and that I'm like, that I study and that I read about. I haven't experienced them directly, thank God. But the thing is, this these things can happen to anyone. And we've seen it on Twitter. And, you know, I hate to bring up, you know, all of the things that happened in June, July. But we've seen all those things happening to people that look like us. And it's scary. Um, it's really scary. And I'm thinking of like, um, Toyin and you know Brianna Taylor as well. Like it's just we we suffer from so many things, and um, I'm always gonna I always bring up this quote um, from the Kambahi River Collective um, in their Black Feminist statement. You know of them saying that Black women, <clears throat> if Black women were free then everyone would be free. And I can actually quote it again. You know, I love my quotes. You know, if black women were free, it would mean that everyone else would have to be free since our freedom would necessitate the destruction of all the systems of oppression. Again, because we are at the bottom of the racial and gender hierarchy. And those things oppress us extremely um, and incredibly um, more than they oppress everyone else. And although they, you know, do oppress everyone else, and I'm not negating that fact, it's just crazy how much um, we are affected. So our freedom necessitates everyone's freedom. And I feel like that's what people don't understand. If y'all paid attention to black women, and so many um, scholars have said this, if y'all paid uh, attention to uh, black women's freedom and liberation and just did the work to free black women from oppression, from the oppression that they face, then you know you would be you'd be helping yourself <laughs> and i think people don't understand that if black men specifically took the time to help us and protect us they would be freeing themselves as well you know i think you know that was pretty heavy for me to talk about but i did want to get that off my chest because i've been thinking about it for a while um for a long while uh actually and i just wanted to share that with you let me know in the comments you know what you think about that if you have any comments, like I was saying before, you know, I feel like when we address these things, we're seen as like men haters and on Twitter, like, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been told, um, I've had a conversation with someone that, you know, was like, you're a man bully. And I was like, <laughs> bye, like get the hell out of here. But my thing is if I can express all those things without being seen as like, a freaking um one of those girls or something like that without being uh without being labeled one of those twitter girls or one of those one of those people that just speak out like it's like do i really want it like it's so hard for black women to even date because the bar is just so low like the bar is so low for people or for men who just not even like, I hate to use the term woke because I, I actually don't like that term, but just who are educated on these things. Like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not about to date no coon. <laughs> I'm not about, to, cause I feel like at this point, like as we're growing older and I've had this conversation with, um, you know, my sister and, you know, a bunch of people, my friends, but like, as we're going older, you know, like I feel like our standards get higher, but it's like, why is it that for black men like why does the pool get smaller <laughs> like you know i feel like black women like our pool gets bigger and bigger the more we like i don't know the more we upgrade ourselves and the the more we glow up like our pool gets bigger but for black men why does that pool get smaller like that is crazy i'm not about to date no coon i'm not about to date no bum like where is the in between <laughs> where where is it um, and I know right now it's probably especially exaggerated because I am home and I'm not going out and not seeing anyone. And also in college, I feel like 
I met people, um, I met people when I was in the club and it's like, I don't want to meet people there anymore. Like I want to meet people in spaces where that are fun, but also like where there's professional people. Like let's keep it professional <laughs> if anything. Um, like I love, I like being ratchet. I like being myself. I like, you know, being cultured and stuff. And I'm not saying that, you know, you have to change yourself, but I am saying like, let's just, I don't know like what is it what is it that we need to do to get people or to get our caliber of you know equally woke or sorry I said equally woke equally yokeness okay um and that's another thing like being a Christian woman a young lady <laughs> that's another thing that I feel like a lot of women black women specifically black Christian women struggle with is like finding a partner that is as equally yoked as you you know you don't want nobody that is that you have to lift up all the time because that's gonna weigh you down you want somebody that will you know that will meet you where you are and grow with you and go down that path um with you and strengthen you and you can strengthen them and you know iron sharpens iron you'll sharpen them you um they sharpen you and that's what I want. That's what most women, I think, want. And, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting that. But I think it's very hard these days to... <clears throat> I forgot to put contour on. I think it's very hard these days to just have that. But yeah, what, like, do we have to reset the world? Like, I feel like 2020 is a little bit of a reset and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do this again. Uh -uh. <laughs> but it's like, what do we have to do to really get it, um, get it popping, get it shaking again? Like, <laughs> were the men, were the caliber of men ever good? Like, it's almost like, am I, am I wishful thinking? Am I just going to have to get what I get? Like, Cause if that's the case, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> I really don't know if I want that. Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think. Like, I th and I know, for example, I know that like me being home right now is definitely contributing to the fact that I feel that there are just no, um, no, I don't want to say there's no good men because that's not true, and I think that would be an insult to. <laughs> to the people I know around me, like my my guy friends and stuff like that, and my family and stuff like that. I don't wanna say, I'm not saying that, but I do think that the, the pool is getting smaller and smaller and I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that personally um, at all. Like, <laughs> it needs to stop. Um, oh yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Like, what's happening? What do we gotta do? <laughs> what do they gotta do? <laughs> like. <laughs> this shit is crazy um but yeah what 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 happened like what do we need to do um and especially when I get out of quarantine um I want to move different like <laughs> nobody should just talk to me anyhow you know what I mean like nobody should talk to me anyhow because I'm a different person I'm a different gal <laughs> okay but I'm trying to move different after quarantine like nobody like i'm not about to entertain just anybody i mean i wasn't doing that before i wasn't just entertaining anybody i want to be intentional about the relationships that i build with people because i do want to build more relationships with people um after quarantine especially um and i think it's just important to be intentional about it and not let just anybody in your space again nobody can just talk to me anyhow like at this point like i'm about to start moving like beyonce like you need to have like a freaking tsa clearance <laughs> like you need to have a freaking clearance before you can even approach me like somebody need to check the list and be like if you're not on the list like you can't talk to me <laughs> but yeah so what's this they, alexa is playing music that i don't even sorry alexa is playing music Oh shit, she heard me. Never mind. Alexa, play. I feel like I've just been chatting. And that's my my thing is though, like, 
I really enjoy girl talk and I think that's probably why I started a YouTube channel like in the first place like and that's probably like why I watch all the things that I watch like all the YouTubers that I'm subscribed to like talk a lot because I talk a lot um and that's what I am attracted to but yeah so I've definitely been chatting <laughs> a lot but I just really enjoy girl talk um I enjoy girl talk with my friends with my family with strangers like I could just be walking in the street and I'm like you want to do girl talk no I'm joking um but yeah I just really enjoy girl talk like I feel like especially when I was in school doing hair like that was like some of the times that I really enjoyed like just talking and stuff I feel like everybody that comes to me to get their hair done like would pour their heart out <laughs> like on a chair in a chair but yeah this quarantine has really been it's been something like shorty has been in the house shorty thought she was going to be having a hot girl summer somebody lied somebody big lied like lies lied like they didn't have to lie like that they didn't have to do me like that <laughs> because this is crazy this i feel every day is just this is crazy <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> this is crazy every day is just crazy like I'm just trying I've been trying to give myself more things to look forward to um whether that's day by day or week by week or month by month um I actually read an article on um how you should handle um avoiding or um taking care of things like post-grad depression um, because that's a thing and I don't I don't think a lot of people are talking about it especially for recent uh, college graduates in the middle of a pandemic like post-grad depression has always been a thing um, but in a pandemic like ain't nobody ever ain't nobody ever say, uh, seen this before we ain't never did this before <laughs> okay um, and I'm not saying that I have it or anything thank God like that my mental health is okay um but i think it is important to know the signs of it and also know how to handle it and know how to avoid it um and one of those things was to give yourself more things to look forward to whether that's like a trip here and there like whether that's out of town or maybe like a little um a little treat or something to, for yourself and for your self-care because shit is getting real out here y'all first of all tell me why my glue like exploded i don't even know and i tried the hair glue thing with for eyelashes it's just not my cup of tea it's not my cup it's not my cup i tried it i tried what the girls were doing but this girl didn't like it these girls they didn't like it <laughs> okay they didn't like it I tried. It didn't work. <laughs> Sorry guys, my camera cut off. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying beforehand, but I already put my lashes on. Um, IJ lashes, of course, period. This is from their multi-pack. Um, well, these are from my old multi-pack. This is my new multi-pack. Um, so I'm about to just finish my makeup and then tackle my hair in I will be done, okay? I wanted to do a side part in my hair, but I don't know anymore. I haven't applied lace in so long, so don't judge me, y'all. Per. <laughs> All right, so I usually wear this wig in the middle part, but I'm thinking I want to do this side part, so I'm about to do that. I got my hot comb on. Ciao. It has burned. Oh, Lord.
All right, guys, so this is the final look. Yes, she is flat ironed and she is hot combed. She is fried dyed and laid to the side, okay? Um, thank you guys so much for watching this chit chat get ready with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. And bye. Stay blessed. Stay beautiful. Bye, guys.